Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. Uh, this week, we're talking about something fun with uh, MIDI and triggering lights. But first, quick shameless plug here. Uh, if you haven't already, please go check out our latest Ascension Collective release. Uh, it's called War and Me. There is a link down in the video section below, and it'll also come up at the end of this video. Um, really, really happy with how that came out. And uh, again, shameless plug, uh, I was able to record, edit, and mix that. So uh, feel free to uh, take a listen to that and um, keep your criticisms to yourself. That's okay. I'm, I'm not asking for them this time, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. <laughs> um, okay, so getting to today's video, um, we uh, this might be kind of a niche thing for some of you, um, but I'm hoping this will be uh, helpful for a lot of you guys who are like me and was having a really hard time finding this information online. Um, so we've kind of had to develop some of this. So what we are doing is we are using some free software to trigger Campsys Magic Q, which is a lighting program, um, via MIDI. Um, so the specific instance we were doing this in was for a church that was using the multitracks.com playback app, um, which can send MIDI out, and they want to start automating their lighting, and eventually we're also going to do ProPresenter, um, but this week we started doing it with the lighting, and it was a bit of a learning curve for me, so I want to try and make this easier for you if you're going to try and do the same thing. So here's the situation we're going to do tonight. Uh, to my right, I've got a... Um, MacBook Pro, uh, which will be acting as our track rig here. So this will be sending MIDI channels out over a network. Um, and, uh, and so we have a network cable going from the MacBook Pro into a PC. Again, the Mac is running Logic. It doesn't have to be Logic. It can be anything that can use MIDI over the network. Um, and what I've done in Logic is I've made a whole bunch of... Um, MIDI triggers starting, uh, they're all in the lowest C note, the lowest octave C, and they start at a velocity of one and work their, their way up to about 99. Um, so you have in this particular example, the ability to run up to 99 cues per song, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so uh, if you can see on my screen here, uh, we are using the audio MIDI setup and then network settings. And then um, this, uh, this Mac, that's how it's sending MIDI over the network. If you have further questions on that, you can look that up online or you can ask me and maybe I'll do some more. Um, but for the most part, I'm just going to have Logic running on here. When I hit play, uh, you should be able to hear in my microphone a metronome going so you can know that it's on time. Um, but it's just me playing these MIDI notes, which you can see on the screen. Um, so that's about it for the Mac. Um, we're going to be mostly focused today over here on our PC. Uh, this is a fairly standard Dell uh, all-in-one touchscreen computer. Um, I think we bought it in 2019, so it's only like two years old. Um, and uh, so, yes. So, we are using, apart from Campus Magic Q itself, we are using three free pieces of software to make this whole connection and triggering thing happen. Uh, the first one, which I don't have on the screen right now because um, it just runs in the background, is Bonjour for PC. Uh, that's right, Bonjour is the, um, I guess, networking protocol that Apple uses. And so um, you can install it on here. It works for hooking up to printers and that kind of thing. And in our case, for um, this next program here called RTP MIDI. Again, this is free. All the links to this kind of stuff is in the description of the video. All right, so RTP MIDI. You can see it's RTP MIDI using Apple. Bonjour. Oh, you. Been canceled. Oh, too bad. All right. In this window, if it's the first time you're opening this up, you need to have my sessions um, turned on and note the name. This is just the generic name, I guess, for this computer. Um, so note that. Down here where it says directory, we can see MBP MIDI. That's the name that I gave my MIDI connection from my Mac. So we need to hit connect. Look at that. 
Over here, it shows up under session. Session is enabled. You can leave all these settings the way it is. And you can see, because I have a network cable, we're running about zero milliseconds to uh, three milliseconds, which is negligible. All right, once you're done with all these settings, again, my sessions is clicked, uh, session is enabled, then you can close this bad mamma jamma and move on. The final free piece of software, other than Campsus Magic Q, which is also free, Holla, um, is uh, this program down here called Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic. There is a new version of this that is a paid app that might be worth getting. It's about $70, but for the purpose of this video, we're doing only free stuff. So you can either open this guy up or also in the link in the description will be um, a file that I'll be uh, temporarily or... Uh, I'll be updating over time. I can't talk today. It's late here. Um, that I've labeled Campsus Triggers. And this is just a file for Bohm's MIDI Translator. So let's open this guy up. This is where all the magic is happening. Um, I, when I said that we're using MIDI to trigger Campsus, I did not say that we were sending MIDI to Campsus because that cost about six, seven hundred dollars to do. Um, which is a bit of a bummer. I love Campsus stuff. I think you should buy Campsus hardware. We're using Campsus dongle for this demonstration today. Um, we own a Campsus PC wing, but I do think that the pricing is a little bit funky in some of these things. So, um, though it may be worth purchasing Campsus for this video, we're going to show that you don't necessarily have to. Um, so, you know, do what you need to with that. But this Bohm's guy here, um, you can see it's, you know, also trying to get us to buy stuff. Again, might be worth it, but for today, we're just gonna hit okay. What this does, if we look at song one here, is it's taking our cues that I've made, it's listening for, just like I talked about earlier, uh, the lowest C note, velocity of one, and when it hears that on whatever window happens to be open at the time, which in our case needs to be Campsys, it's going to literally type in 101 enter, just like if you did it with the keyboard, but it's gonna be very, very fast. Um, this is very uh, <laughs> you know, rudimentary, but it works. It works really, really well. So um, we're gonna leave this open in the background for right now. We, we don't want to close this guy. Um, and let's go ahead and open up our Magic Q PC. If you're new to lighting, this is a great program. Um, again, the people at Campsys do an awesome job, definitely deserve your support. Um, the program is free to download. You can see at the top, we are in demo mode. We are using the $100 um, Campsys dongle to connect to a... Um, LED tape thing that I have on the floor that kind of looks like a bomb, but it's just lighting. Um, so, um, great program. I've got some other videos you should check out if you're looking for lighting programs. Okay, so when you first open Campsys, it looks like this, it's, it's blank. Um, if you notice at the top, this might be different from your Campsys. I have a button that says home and a button that says QSAC. That's something I've added that makes this um, a lot easier to do. So I'm gonna really quickly show you how to do that. We're gonna go over here to the right to this setup button here. Click on that. Um, over here, we're gonna click on the playback, I'm sorry, the Windows button right here. And down almost to the bottom, it says layout buttons, always active. Um, as a default, yours probably says no, you want to say yes. When you do that, you've got 10 uh, soft buttons across the top here that you can click on. For example, if I click on home, it takes me to layout one, my quad boxes, where I go for when I'm doing my programming, which is great. You can also resize these things. Maybe you're not using anything that has position or beam. You can make these whatever size you want. So like group and color and boom, you get more space to work with. So this is a really useful trick uh, and a lot easier to find than the layout buttons all the way over here. So QStack, when you first open Campsys, the playback one over here is automatically selected. So we're gonna use that to our advantage. Over here, uh, in these buttons over on the right, we're gonna click on the QStack button. It's gonna take us to our QStack for playback one. And then it's already doing this for you, but it can't hurt to go ahead and click on the top left gray button here, this gray column. It's uh, blue because it's selected, but that's where you wanna click. Um, so once we've done that, once we've clicked on that top left um, 
column here, uh, go to record, type in the word QStack, John QStack, whatever it is you want to put, and then click on this button. And now you will have a QStack button just like I have. So I got home and then I got QStack and it takes me right here. Even if I click on something like the fade time for a Q, if I click on QStack, it puts my cursor back here in the top left hand corner. Very important because when Bohm's MIDI translator receives a Q or a MIDI note, it's literally gonna type in 101. So for example, if I wanted to per personally manually go to the 104 Q here, I can type in 104 and hit enter and it goes to that Q. In fact, just for fun here, let's, uh, ooh, yeah. Very cool. Um, so we got our light going on here. Um, so that's exactly what's going to happen, but very, very quickly now that I'm going to hit play in my logic rig. So watch the orb of fun here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear in the background my click going. Um, and here we go. And that's it. Now I'm doing that at 120 beats per minute. Um, the first beat of each measure is when it's firing, but you can do this really, really quickly and it'll keep up because we have very, very little latency because of the network cable. So it's working awesome. So that's it. It works really well. You notice that on song one, I've renumbered my cues to start at 101 instead of one. So Naturally, if I'm doing song two, it's 201 and further, three, 301, so on and so forth. Um, it's working really, really, really well. Um, so, pros, it works, it's cheap, awesome, very good pros. Um, cons, let's talk about them. Obviously, a big con is that you have to be on the screen, on your computer, for this to work. So if I wanted this PC to be running OBS or ProPresenter or Minecraft, <laughs> Snakes, whatever, um, I can't do that at the same time because if I'm not on the screen, then it's gonna type 102 enter into some other window and that won't do me any good. So um, a couple ways you can fix that. One, if you are using a Mac instead of a PC, instead of using Bohm's, and in fact, you wouldn't have to use, you know, RTP MIDI or you will still need the network thing. You won't need Bonjour because you'll already have that. But instead of using Bohm's, you can use a program called Osculator. Now, Osculator is not free, so it doesn't fit the, uh, the, the requirements for this video, um, but it's only 20 bucks. And one of the cool things about Osculator is you can receive mini notes and just like Bohm's, you can spit out keystroke information. But the cool thing is that you can specify that those keystrokes are going to go to Magic Q and not anything else. So that works out really, really well. But again, it's $20. And personally, I don't think that, I think Magic Q works better on a PC than it does on a Mac. Just throwing that out there. I'm a Mac guy. I use a Mac when I program with Magic Cube, but when we're doing events, we use a PC. So there it is. The other option, and I don't know if this works, is um, to maybe instead of using Bohm's Classic is to purchase the, the Pro version, which is about $70 US. Um, I haven't researched this yet because again, I'm trying to do this on the free side of things, um, but maybe that has an option like Osculator where you can specify what program it goes on to. I don't know. So someone check it out and let me know because I'm really curious about that. Uh, another con, I don't want to call it a glitch. It's more of a um, eccentricity. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I don't, I can't close Bohm's when it's running. Um, you can minimize it, but if you notice right now, we can see it in our toolbar or whatever you call it. So I'm not a PC guy. Um, when I minimize it, it is no longer there. It is still active, but you cannot see it there. You can see it over on this right-hand corner. Um, right here is our little Bohm's guy. You can double-click that, and it's running just like no problem. Now, the bad thing about that is that you can actually open up multiple instances of Bohm's. And you can see how that might get a little hairy because now you have multiple 
devices that are listening for MIDI and spitting out uh, keystroke information. So it could be possible to double up. Maybe it could get a little bit funky. Um, so it's much better to have one open. So again, it's not really a huge con because um, either you can minimize it and know that it exists over here, or you can be like me and just leave it as some clutter. It's behind camps. It's magic queue. Um, but at least I know it's open and working. Um, so that's what I do. Another con um, when it comes to bones and, um, and you know, this kind of goes for some of the other stuff that's on here too. Uh, and this is, you know, a problem for anything windows related is if, if Windows were to update and no longer work with this legacy piece of software, and again, this computer is two or three years old, um, it has not been updated since we bought it, like it's literally never been on the internet, um, and uh, we installed it on another computer that is very recent, and it's everything's working, um, so it seems to be good, but who knows, one Windows update could take this whole system down. So. You just need to be wise of that. Turn off your Windows updates. If you can be like me, don't have your Windows computer hooked up to the internet. If you do need to update something, especially if it's doing multiple you know, programs and stuff, do that early in the week so you have a chance to fix anything that might break. Um, that's just being wise. So that's not really specific to this program. Um, that's something you should be careful of no matter what you're doing on a PC. So... Um, yeah, so it's been working great. Try it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, uh, right now, the link that's online, depending on when you look at it, has five songs. Each has 20 um, MIDI notes already applied to them. So song two would be the lowest C sharp, and then D, D sharp, E, hopefully someone around your life is a uh, musician and can explain that to you. Um, I'll go through and temporarily at some point I'll update this. And like I said, I want to have at least 10 songs with 99 cues each and maybe one for like, um, work lights and when the pastor comes on stage and like that kind of thing. Um, so I've got some ideas for how I'm gonna do that. Um, but I want to go ahead and make this video for you guys. Hopefully this is helpful. Check it out. Let me know. And one last thing again, please go check out war in me from Ascension collective. There'll be a link somewhere on this screen in the next few minutes here. Uh, go check it out, and I hope you enjoy it. Until next time, have a great week.